Well, hi, I'm George Smitherman, uh, President and CEO of the Cannabis Council. I'm here with my colleague, Pierre Colleen. We're on a lunch break from our uh, first uh, segment of our inaugural Grass on the Hill event. Uh, presentations this morning from three members of parliament representing three different political parties and really reflecting such strong awareness and support for our industry and for our cannabis community, as well as presentations from a notable pollster, David Coletto from Abacus, which uh, demonstrated amongst other things, really, really strong support amongst Canadians for the government to take a more positive and proactive role in supporting the cannabis industry. And uh, powerful data brought forward by Ernst & Young, uh, one of the most noteworthy uh, consulting and accounting firms who have uh, taken a good hard look at the challenges that are being faced by many uh, most practically all uh, regulated participants in the Canadian cannabis space. Uh, license holders have come under severe price compression, but government taxes, the share of government taxes have gone up over the period since legalization and the economic conditions for many uh, in the regulated cannabis space are very, very challenging indeed. So we bring this message of uh, urgent need for change to Ottawa, to the nation's capital from where we're regulated. From today's conference, we build energy towards tomorrow's more than 20 meetings with members of parliament and uh, political staffers for key government ministers as part of a launch of an effort to drive five big asks to try and frame out the necessary change so we can create a sustainable cannabis industry and work with the government to achieve more of the objectives of uh, legalization in the first place. Pierre, do you want to say anything? All I could add is it's, uh, it's wonderful to be here today. There's so much uh, energy in the room. People are really looking forward to so much uh, energy in the room. People are really looking forward, uh, I think, to this afternoon and to tomorrow, the chance to, to really share our stories and, and start to call for some change and to start to move the needle a bit for our industry. So, uh, great place, great content, great day to be here. Happy to take any questions from Assembled Media. For our readers at home, hi, Cy Williams, hi, Canada Magazine. Could you run us through uh, uh, the five big asks for our viewers at home? The five big asks really start with framing out the need for financial viability. That has a lot to do with excise, taxes, fees, and also a lack of support from the government for the economic prosperity of the sector. Uh, we're, the second issue I'd say is that we're dealing with very, very aggressive kind of nanny state and red tape conditions, and the regulatory burdens are holding back the ability of the legal cannabis industry to achieve more customers from the legacy environment. So that's the third bit is we need a uh, level playing field with illicit markets. Uh, there are people uh, that are using uh, financial services and web-based sales, a variety of tactics that are not available to the legal cannabis uh, space. And we really, really need to work to, uh, to build upon that. We wanna uh, elevate the necessity for uh, the ability to communicate with our consumers. This is a really, really big part of it. Whether it's a retailer that's not in a position to convey to their consumers the attributes of products and such. This is really, really holding back our business. And we really think that there's been a very, very significant deterioration in medicinal cannabis and we need to elevate uh, patient access. So those would be our, those would be our five. These are very often interlinked and at the heart of them, they circle back always to finding a way to make some policy changes so that all of us together can achieve more of the objectives of the Cannabis Act in the first place, such as you know getting, hand, getting money out of the criminal elements and testing the products that people are consuming. We have a lot of progress yet to make in areas like that. Well, that, that is amazing. And so one of the big takeaways for myself this morning was the amazing presentation on the excise tax and uh, discussions going around uh, on, on how that can be maybe perhaps altered or, or uh, uh, worked on to help some of our licensed producers and processors. Would you like to touch on just a little bit more of what was discussed this morning? Well, the excise, uh, the excise tax, of course, was originally characterized as a buck in 10, 10%. 
the, the study from E and Y, and it does vary by categories, but the study from E and Y demonstrating that the government take, uh, the combined take of government taxes and fees, very often three and sometimes four times greater than that 10% that was originally predicted. And the consequence of, uh, the consequence of that is to uh, make it pretty near impossible for companies to be uh, successful and profitable. What we have is an environment where we have lots of sales, uh, but really the lion's share of uh, resources going to, the, going to the government. And over the time since legalization, we've seen, uh, you know, we've seen actually compression in the amount that licensed producers are getting for their, uh, getting for their products. Another feature that does come out of the work of Ernst & Young is to highlight the very, very extreme distribution level markups that occur at the provinces, which really should be characterized in the bucket of fees and taxes for government. So this is a challenge that we have, and the result of it is we're sawed off at around 50-50 with the illicit market in terms of business. It's in the interest of everybody that we find policy changes so that we can grow that, grow that business and help to achieve those public health objectives. Very well said. Last question, George and Pierre, thank you. Um, what do we have to look forward to this afternoon? I understand we're gonna be getting briefed and prepared to, uh, for tomorrow's lobby day. So if you could give us a little more information about that, that would be amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna up here on that one. Sure. So um, George and I are gonna host a session where we're gonna engage uh, the conference delegates in a discussion conversation uh, about um, our discussions and about our uh, lobbying activity with uh, government officials and, uh, and groups uh, tomorrow. It's really gonna be in a sense a boot camp to help people get prepared for talking to elected officials, talking to officials in ministers' offices, about our industry, about some of the uh, about the successes of cannabis legalization, the great things that have happened, about some of the challenges that our industry is facing, some very acute challenges that our industry is facing at the microeconomic level, and then really um, helping decision makers understand our five big asks uh, in support of change in the industry, and then the final piece, which really builds on the presentation we had from this morning was on, um, on how Canadians are really comfortable with legal cannabis. I think that's one of the key messages we want to bring forth tomorrow when we talk to elected officials is that Canadians have, in a sense, are comfortable with legal cannabis and are comfortable with government supporting this industry. Um, we're going to follow up with the stakeholder session. George, maybe you could talk yep. about that one. Uh, two more things will happen uh, following the session here, and I do. we got a really, really lively uh, group of uh, I'm going to say the usual usual suspects in the sense that they're very very high profile community leaders uh, are going to participate in a panel. I hope that that's actually going to demonstrate that across the landscape of the cannabis sector, there's quite a lot of commonality on these uh, on some of these objectives for change. So I'm really looking forward to that. And at four o'clock, we have a visit from the Honorable Ahmed Hussain. The Minister of Housing and Minister Responsible for uh, Diversity and Inclusion and we're going to have a very very poignant presentation as part of that from Cannabis Amnesty which is a community partner of C3 and they've got a really really exciting new product that they're going to preview for all of us as we're quite aligned on working hard on the issue of helping Canadians to achieve pardons from their past history with uh, criminal charges related to cannabis and That'll be it. People will go off and prepare for tomorrow's, uh, for tomorrow's many meetings across Parliament Hill. Well, thank you, George and Pierre, on behalf of High Canada and all of our readers. It's great to have the Cannabis Council of Canada uh, advocating for Canadians across the board. Thank you so well, much. We're pleased to be able to do it in partnership with uh, folks like you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, and regularly encouraging them. I think a big part of the challenge that we have is a lot of people have